And within this, he was saying that actually all that is wrong with the world that we allow to get between us, to divide us, to separate us from each other, it's all over. If only we choose to accept it. So T joined the staff team um, at the beginning of the month, officially. So we're going to welcome T as part of the staff team. Um, I'm going to pray, but if anyone else would like to come and join us to pray, that would just really be a blessing. We would just be sharing a few tips um, that some of us as individuals have picked up over the past year or so uh, in different small little ways that we can be caring for God's creation. They just don't seem to, to want to follow Jesus. Why don't they want eternal life? Uh, why don't they want life in all its fullness? Well, perhaps an element of that is because our faith at times doesn't actually sound or look all that great. So in fact, it's not even just about rethinking about who's in and who's out, but actually parables such as these and Matthew 25 tell us that it's not even our call to make. Because as we know, we can get that very wrong when we decide who's in and who's out. But Jesus tells us that all are welcome, absolutely everyone. Um, and after lots of consideration and discussions uh, and a couple of sneaky preaching visits, um, I've been called to become minister of uh, Mark Yate Baptist Church. It's uh, a couple of hours away from here. Uh, it's been a really, really big decision for us to make. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you on this grotty day. <laughs> it's always sunny in Bogner, apart from when it's raining. Good to see you all. I'm uh, Jamie. I had to think about that for a minute. I'm one of the ministers here. Welcome to the Shore Community Church. It's really lovely to have you with us, whether you're in the room with us or whether you're joining us online, you're very welcome to, or whether you're catching up later. Um, it's fantastic to spend time together, just making time, making space in our week, making space in our lives to just stop and focus on the Lord, to give him the glory, to disconnect from all the, and I hope that will be your experience today, you'll be able to disconnect from all the other things that are shouting for your attention or your time or, or for, to create anxiety for you or any of that and just stop and worship the Lord, to, to be present with him as he is present with us. So, if you are able to, if you're comfortable, please stand with me and we're going to sing an opening song. If you'd rather sit, that's absolutely fine too. Let's just sing this song, meditate on these words as we recognise we are coming in to the presence of the living God. We have the privilege and the honour to come into his courts, to come into his presence, to approach his throne. And we go, yeah, yeah, whatever, Jamie, get on with it. No, no, stop, think, meditate. We have the presence of the living God with us. He invites us to come into his presence. He welcomes us to come into his presence, the living God. What an awesome privilege, what an awesome joy. How lovely is your dwelling place, O oh Lord Almighty, my soul longs and even faints for Better 
is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. One thing I ask and I would seek to see your beauty, to find you in the place your glory dwells. elsewhere better is one day better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house better is one day in your courts thousands elsewhere better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house better is one day in your courts thousands elsewhere my heart my heart and flesh cry out for you, the living God. Your spirit's water for my soul. I've tasted and I've seen. Come once again to me. I will draw near to you. I will draw near. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your court, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Let that be our prayer today. Let that be our reality. Any other thing that we would desire, we acknowledge is insufficient. Lord, we need your presence. Any other thing that we might prioritize, any other thing that might grab our attention, we recognize it's secondary. Lord, you are king. You are on your throne. Have your way, Lord, with us this morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Shore Community Church. I'm Nick. I'm the other minister here. It's great to have you guys here in the room. And a welcome to you guys online as well. So we've got a few different things to share with you this morning. We've got lots of elements to this service, clearly. Uh, one of the notices is that we've got communion this morning. Um, so for you guys in the room, that's all right. You've got your stuff already here. But for you guys online, if you want to partake in communion, just grab a bit of bread, a bit of something to drink, um, and do join with us in communion if you uh, would like to. 
So a, a big notice is uh, that it's actually this week that we have Coffee Plus. Uh, not last week, this week. So it's this coming Thursday. Um, kickoff is at 10.30, um, but people are really welcome from 10 o'clock uh, if they'd like a warm space to come to. So that is Coffee Plus, a real opportunity to just gather together, um, to eat good cake, to uh, have good coffee and tea, um, but also to hear a little message as well. Um, and we'll be sharing on the theme of remembrance in, in that time. So please do come along or invite uh, any friends, anyone is welcome to that uh, at 10.30 in the cafe. Also, on the 15th of December, we are building up to a really special event, um, and it's going to be a really special Christmas event, where we're going to be welcoming in a world Grand Slam uh, poetry champion, Harry Baker. Um, he's, he's really gifted. Just type in Harry Baker uh, on YouTube. You'll see lots of uh, videos about him. He's done different TED Talks as well. Um, but it's just going to be a really, a really good performance where it's going to be feel good, uh, but it's going to be challenging. It's going to be encouraging. Um, so please do come along. Invite your friends. Invite your neighbours. It's going to be a really accessible event and we're excited that Sophia uh, Jenkins as was Mitchell she's going to be coming and supporting Harry uh, with with some songs at the start of the event as well so it's going to be really nice relaxed atmosphere uh, tickets are £10 for adults and then £7.50 uh, for children and young people and students um, so please do book on for that uh, all the details have been sent out in the email uh, but if you need any more details have a chat with me have a chat with Julie as well and then after the service today and for the coming weeks uh, we're going to be selling tickets as well so if you're interested if you want to find out more if you want to get a ticket uh, after today's service go and seek out Julie Julie, Julie, give us a wave. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, please do uh, book in for that. It would be great to have this place packed. Uh, I'm just going to invite Alistair to come up now and share uh, something very important as well. Morning. Right. Many of you may have been aware that we had funding to employ a part-time youth worker. This is where if there was a drum roll, it would be steadily starting to drum. Oh no, I've got ages. <laughs> so it would be slowly. <laughs> um, so we advertised, um, and we were pretty niche in our advertisement. We were looking for someone to help equip our church youth and the youth in the community to have the best chance of becoming everything they were made to be. We wanted to find someone to champion their unique talents, hopes and dreams and we wanted to find someone to encourage them to grow spiritually to embrace a joyful life and share that joy with others and to be a role model and spiritual leader to the youth and wider community isn't that an exciting commission <laughs> and we found the perfect person <laughs> tea <laughs> So T joined the staff team um, at the beginning of the month, officially. So we're going to welcome T as part of the staff team. Um, I'm going to pray, but if anyone else would like to come and join us to pray, that would just really be a blessing. Um, if you want to come up now, and that would be great. Thank you. So if I start by praying, and then I'll just hand over the mic. Lord God, we thank you so much for T, for all that she is in you, for her love for you and for, call, and for her calling to share that love for you with our youth. Lord, we pray your blessing on her and on the work that she will be doing with our young people and the young people in our community.
Father, we want to thank you for tea. Um, we thank you for her gifting, for her joy, for her smile, for her love, for her passion, um, and her enthusiasm for the young people. We just pray that um, she will build on what she's already doing in this church um, to bring more of the young people um, into a, a better knowledge of knowing you. And I pray for you, T, that as you bring people into a deeper relationship with God, that you too would have a deeper relationship with God, um, that he would equip you, um, that he would encourage you, that he would build you up, that he would bring people around you to support you. And I pray that as you pour out a blessing to others, that you would be blessed too. We just want to hold you up before God. Um, and we want to thank God that he's placed you in this church. Amen. Dear Father God, I just pray that you would help us as a church to look out for T and to pray for her regularly and to support her as best we can and just pray that you would um, put that in our hearts and in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord, for T. And we ask that as she pours herself out to others, especially the young people in our church, that you will pour into her through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, Lord, we thank you so much, firstly, for the young people in this church. Thank you for each one of them, that you love every single person. And you love those who are yet to experience you as well through this church, those who are going to be welcomed in in the coming months and years. And Lord, we thank you so much for T. Thank you for how she's already brought so much to this church over the past few years. And we thank you that she will continue to be such a blessing to us and to the young people. So Lord, we just pray that you fill her up and pray for peace for her as she takes on this role, that she can know that that is given by you and that the church community is here to support her no matter what. So Lord, I just pray that she can really feel commissioned into that role and that she will be free to be able to express you uh, to those young people and that they can really experience you and your love. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Another round of applause for T, I think. So just a few more things to share with you guys. Um, just a reminder that Carla, uh, who got married to John last week, she is off for a further week. Uh, so you are stuck with me and Jamie. Um, and if you need any help with administrative needs, then hold your breath. No, um, just, just come and have a chat with, with either of us and I'm, I'm sure we'll, pray we'll, for you. we'll do our best to help you out. Um, but uh, yeah, so Carla will be back next Sunday. Also, a reminder about the Christmas dinner that will be taking place on Christmas Day um, on the 25th. And if you didn't know that one, uh, we, we do really need some volunteers to be able to help with that. Um, so Sue, Sue, if you could just give us a wave. Sue over there is just asking for helpers for that. So if you can grab her after the service, if, you're, if you feel able to in any way help for that day, whether that is in preparation for the day or on the day itself uh, with the meal or packing up after the meal as well. So please do have a chat with Sue about that one. I'm just going to invite the eco team to come up. Um, so for the past year and a half now, we've had uh, an eco group in the church. Uh, that was formed out of a life group that we had set up. Uh, and over the past year and a half, this eco group has been uh, kind of looking at different ways how we as a church can be better uh, caring for God's creation. Um, and some of us might be aware, we might not be. Uh, it was a much bigger deal last year than it has been this year, but COP27 uh, is actually starting today. So that's taking place in Egypt, and that will be running for two weeks. So that is where, uh, hopefully, all of the world's leaders, or a lot of the world's leaders, uh, will be coming along uh, and talking about climate issues and how we, as nations, can be better caring for the world um, and we thought as a as an eco group um, that we would kind of as a because it is cop 
starting today, we would be praying into that. But also, we would just be sharing a few tips um, that some of us as individuals have picked up over the past year or so uh, in different small little ways that we can be caring for God's creation where if we contribute those together, we can actually make real tangible differences. So we're going to, this is going to be really quick fire uh, where we're just going to be sharing briefly a few different things um, that we've learned. So I'm going to start here with Joe and then work our way around. Um, the French have a saying that says, little by little, a bird builds its nest. And um, we are asked that all little bits of foil like those from the top of this and this side of thing, you make into a bigger ball because these little bits clog up the machines in the um, recycling place. This is not a jacket potato. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I, wanna put, I want you to put your hand up if you knew that we could recycle cheese packets. Put your hand up. Okay, not that many of you, but more than I thought there would be, actually. Um, so you can recycle cheese packets. These are, these are cheese packets that my mum saved for me <laughs> to give. And the thing is, you need to bring them to church and put them in the box for Foresight, because um, actually Foresight recycle these to get money to give to the charity Foresight, which helps people with visual impairments. So if you recycle your cheese packets, bring them to church, you're not only helping the environment and not putting them in the bin, but you're also helping other people. So good tip. Hi, I've got two for the price of one. I found on, on the website, um, a, 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 I found a dot com, a recyclenow.com. I just came across it by accident. If you go into recycle.com, you can decide something that you want to recycle, like a Nick Drury, and you put it in, <laughs> and then you put in his postcode, and it says, not recyclable. <laughs> But what I did was I put in toothpaste uh, tubes and it said that I could recycle them at Boots. So I didn't know that. And I'd been collecting uh, toothpaste tubes for some time. So I went along to Boots and they do a scheme called Boots Scan to Recycle. And what you do is you have to download that little thing and um, you can scan your things you can get it linked to your reward card for, and for every five things that you then recycle you get 500 points and what do points mean oh. prizes five pounds worth actually so it's worth collecting five and then putting them through if you need it's not easy i have to say because i've been twice to boots now but um i have worked it out so if you need some help with that just come and see me um, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I've discovered that we can na now recycle more is, is soft plastics, which you can't put in the green bin, and lots of people just put that in their normal bins, but you can actually take them to most of the major supermarkets like Tesco's, Sainsbury's, Asda, Waitrose, um, Morrison's. Um, but there's quite a few things that you might think, well, well can I recycle that or not? And we can actually do um, the cat food pouches as long as you wash them out, but if you just wash them under a cold tap, then you're not wasting extra energy, and you can pop those in there as well, and it just helps with uh, the, the, the general reduction of what, what things that you actually have to put in the general household waste. And we actually, each week, we have as much soft plastics as we have of normal rubbish in, in our bin, so now we have a twin bin to, for dealing with that. Hello. Um, I'm talking about um, refillable products. Uh, there's various outlets in the area. You can go to a sh shop in the High Street. There's a shop in Chichester. There's another one in Rose Green at the farm shop. I actually go to one in Arundel. So when you've finished your washing up liquid, this is an eco brand, uh, which I prefer to buy, but any brand, you can take the container and have it filled, oops, have it filled up. <laughs> and um, it's slightly cheaper than buying it from scratch but that's not the point the point is you're saving on plastic and you're buying environmentally friendly products as well and you can use these bottles over and over again until the mechanisms stop working so any any container so what i do is i have two containers one that i'm using and one that i've got spare to take to the shop so that i never run out and i use um, washing up liquid hand wash uh, liquid detergent, you can even get toilet cleaner and other cleaning products, shampoo, 
lots of things like that. And some of the shops also sell um, food products and things like that where you can take your own containers. Thank you. <laughs> My wife says there's always a choice, and what my wife says <laughs> is sometimes true. <laughs> but here I have here I have a tea packet, tea India. Very seems very ethical. And what is amazing is you would think that was soft plastic, but no, it's biodegradable. So I would just chop it up and stick it in my compost, much to my wife's annoyance. And, um, but um, it's worth looking at the labels sometimes because uh, you would think that was soft plastic, so you take it to co-op, but uh, it isn't, it's biodegradable, so don't mix the two. Okay, thank you. Morning, I'm the last one. Way, right, okay. Repair, recycle, don't just be a consumer. Buy for the long term. Um, look at what we purchase, but the big positive is, if you look and you're careful, think of all the money you can save, and I'm sure the church would be very grateful, or whatever. Um, and I purposely bought my phone, because it's second hand. You don't need to cough up 780 pounds for a new phone. You're just as good, well, unless you're a super wonderful photographer. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, Chris, I'm afraid you're actually the penultimate one because I forgot to go first. So how many of you guys recycle, put in your bottle tops in the recycling? I'm afraid they don't actually get recycled. Sad fact that actually with the local recycling plants, uh, they don't actually recycle them. Uh, but actually what they do do is this. So blister packs, you know, paracetamol, cold flu tablets, all of that stuff, that is recycled. Um, so don't chuck them in your normal bin, make sure that they do get recycled. So these, sadly, they're too small to fit in the machine uh, and they don't get recycled. These do. So that was a final fun fact. Yeah. Hmm. Or you can take them to the post office at Rose Green. They collect them as well. Ah, OK. Yeah. So don't pop them in your normal domestic recycling, but yes, that's brilliant. That's really good. Yeah, so you can save them and take them to the Rose Green Post Office or bring them here. That's great. Thanks for that. <laughs> brilliant. Cool. So before we continue with our sung worship together and before the kids head out to their activities, we are going to be moving into a time of communion. Um, and as we transition from that into communion, it might seem a bit uh, random, but actually what we've just been sharing about there, and we've been talking about COP27 as well, it's all about solidarity. Solidarity that is this really powerful term. It's about people uniting under a common cause. It's about certain ties that bind people together as one. And communion is also a reminder about solidarity as well. It's a reminder about Jesus' solidarity with the world. So communion, it reminds us of this total act of solidarity that Jesus expressed through his death on the cross. That the cross was Jesus' voluntary acceptance of undeserved suffering but actually as an act of total solidarity with the pain of the world. Who likes suffering? No one does, do we? None of us like suffering. We try to avoid it at all costs. But actually Jesus chose to accept and to embrace suffering as an act of solidarity, as a way of uniting us all together. And when Jesus was on the cross, he said the words, it is finished. 
And within this, he was saying that actually all that is wrong with the world that we allow to get between us, to divide us, to separate us from each other, it's all over. If only we choose to accept it. Jesus created a solidarity between us all, something that we can all come together over, a reminder that actually all of us are forgiven, not once but time and time again. Jesus forgives us all, every single one of us. And that is the message of communion, that actually Jesus calls us and brings us together through his death on the cross. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he sat and he shared a meal with his disciples. And during that meal, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Eat this and remember me. And in the same way, shortly after Jesus took the wine and he said, This is the blood of the new covenant. Drink this and remember me. And these are our acts of solidarity where we come together as a united body, where we come and share in communion together, when we remember what Jesus did for us and what he continues to do for us as well. So all of you are welcome to join with communion this morning. If you would like to, if that you feel in that place to, to want to do that and to share that with God and with those around us as well, then please do come and join in with that. Uh, it's grape juice um, and it's uh, bread and then there is gluten-free bread just over here as well. So please, when you're ready, uh, please do come and share in that together. If anybody would like it, bring it over to them. Just give us a wave and we can do that.
kids are going to be heading out to their activities now. Um, but as the kids are heading out, we are going to be taking up our offering together. Uh, if we could just have a few helpers with the offering, that would be brilliant. Um, so the offering is an important part of our worship, an important expression of worship. If you're visiting, please don't worry about passing the baskets by. But if this is your church um, and you want to help continue the work of the church, then please do give in whatever way you can. And as we hand around the offering, we're going to be continuing with our sung worship together.
silence the boast of sin and grave.
Loving God, we glorify your name this morning. Lord, we thank you that we have this opportunity to sing your praises, to hear what you have to say to us. Lord, may we have eyes to see and ears to listen. Lord, as we hear from your word this morning, may we be encouraged, may we be restored, may we feel challenged. Lord, may we feel challenged in how we can better glorify your name throughout the world. So Lord, we lift all of our praises to you now. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Please be seated. So if we could just, Kay, if you wouldn't mind just clicking across on the lectern button and bringing, yes, that is awesome. So this morning we are continuing in our series uh, that Jamie kicked off for us uh, a number of weeks ago now. So the making of the fellowship, journeying towards Christian community. So you might have been aware you might have come along to some of the talks that we've already had they're all online so do check them out but we are asking the question of what does it mean for us to be a christian community to be church and what does that mean for us today in this context and how do we come together as a community uh, in seeking to serve the world as well so there's lots of questions that are being asked within uh, this series Um, so please do check out um the different parts of this series to, to catch up if you haven't had chance to already. Uh, but, but you know me, I like to sometimes chuck out a question and I'm afraid I'm going to be doing that right at the start of the talk. Um, so the question to you guys this morning, um, just if you feel able to, just to chat with the person next to you. If not, that's okay just to reflect on it yourself. But how do you picture heaven or how do you picture God's kingdom so what is the image that you have of heaven whatever your background whatever your upbringing what is the image or what are some of the images that you have of heaven of god's kingdom so just really quick just that chance to chat with the person next to you um, about that Right, and if they haven't had chance to, for the other person to start sharing their image as well. Okay, I know that's really short time, isn't it? I hope you've had chance to just have a little bit of a think around that, because now I'm about to ask you an even harder question. Why? Why do you have those images? Um, I won't ask you to to chat with the person next to you. That could be a bit of a a trickier one, but just one for us to ponder ourselves. Why do we have those images? What have we drawn them from? Are they from the Bible? Are they directly from the Bible? Are they from our upbringings? Are they from our parents? Are they from this church or other churches that we grew up in? Are they from TV shows? Uh, what, what are the images that we have of heaven, of God's kingdom, and why do we have those more importantly? Um, so for a lot of us, we will have grown up with certain specific images of heaven. I don't know if any of these might have been ones that you had in your head or ones that you will have come across before um, the stairway to heaven very good song Um, I don't think this image is based on that Um, or or the pearly gates Uh, these ones don't look very pearly but you know the gates of heaven Uh, I should have got a St Peter there as well shouldn't I welcomes everyone in or maybe this one I don't even know what's going on in this picture but just (laughs) a load of different stuff of course there's clouds um, and there's 
Jesus kind of floating up there. Um, yeah, it's all a little bit weird, actually, isn't it, as I look at it a bit more. But we kind of have these weird images of heaven. Um, and for some of us, there, there might have been a lot of overlap in what we shared. Uh, for some of us, they might, they might be quite different to one another. And, and the truth of the matter is, is that actually in the Bible, it is really quite vague. There are lots of different descriptions, um, and it is hard to pin down, which is why we end up probably with images like this one. Um, but we are going to be reflecting on this a little bit further uh, in this talk. Um, but the reading that we have this morning talks about God's kingdom, um, and it doesn't talk about it in I was about to say in this way, uh, but I'm not sure what's happened there. Um, But it does, oh, is this what happens with Jamie's all the time as well? Oh dear, yeah. Cheers. I'm just getting the young people to help me out here, yeah. (laughs) So I'm just going to invite uh, Hannah to come up and she's just going to be sharing the reading for this morning. So this is from Luke 14, 15. 24. Oh, and that was a final image. One of the dinner guests on hearing this said to him, blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, someone gave a great dinner and invited many at the time for the, di- for the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, come for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. Uh, the first said to him, I have bought a piece of land and I must go out and see it. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to try them out. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I have just been married and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, go out at once into the streets and the lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. And the slave said, sir, what you ordered has been done and there is still room. Then the master said, to the slave, go out into the roads and the lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who are invited will taste my dinner. Awesome, thank you. I've got to mention a very crucial point, the name of my talk that you might have briefly seen there. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and hopefully that will become clearer as the service goes on. Um, but as Hannah's just shared that passage there, that is a, uh, it's fairly well known. Uh, it is repeated uh, in, a, in a different way in the book of Matthew as well that we'll look at in a short while too. Um, but this is where Jesus shares a parable uh, with uh, his dinner guests. Um, and... He shares that parable and that story. So for those of us here, um, some of us might have been Christians for a long, long time. We might have been coming along to church for a, a good chunk of time. And I don't know if any of you have ever wondered why others, why friends, family, work colleagues don't have at times just not really seemed to be interested in church at all, not been interested in the faith that you have, that you might have communicated to those people, and why, even though you've shared with them, they just don't seem to, to want to follow Jesus. Why don't they want eternal life? Uh, why don't they want life in all its fullness? Well, perhaps an element of that is because our faith at times doesn't actually sound or look all that great. To some people, it might actually come across as very strict, very somber, quite scary at times, um, restrictive, maybe fun-sucking. Church and the followers of Jesus, we are actually called and supposed to be a foretaste of God's kingdom to come, a flavour of what is to come. 
But I think perhaps at times we miss the mark and over the centuries gone by, I think we have definitely missed the mark in how we represent ourselves to those outside of the church. So perhaps there's friends and there's family and there's work colleagues who might look at the church, they might look at Christians and think, I don't want that. There's a theologian who said, uh, God has always had a very hard time at giving away God. No one seems to want this gift. And actually, it's not just necessarily those outside the church who don't seem to want this gift at times, but actually also people inside the church can often seem like they're not actually that interested in having this gift of God. But actually, we'd rather have the religion, we'd rather have the laws, the commandments, the obligations, the duties. Maybe for some of us over the years, we've attended church out of duty. We might have done it perhaps a bit unthinkingly. I think COVID has been a bit of a a challenger of this for folks, hasn't it? Where actually, for for many of us, we've, we've had to ask those questions of, why did we come to church all of those Sundays? And do I want to continue coming again? Now that I've actually had all of this time in lockdown, will I choose to return back? So that question that I asked at the start of how do you picture heaven? For many of us, it might have been images growing up of uh, gates and, yeah, that's, we'll try a different one. We'll see if that one works. Cheers. So some of us might have had different images growing up. Uh, We might have had different images of of like, yeah, the gates or the clouds, maybe St. Peter um, and... Uh, and maybe that everything is just light all the time. I don't know if you're noticing those pictures. Everything's really bright. I'm actually quite sensitive to light. So though all of those images, they don't actually really appeal. Another one is that maybe this picture being an exception. A lot of these photo, uh, photos, uh, images, pictures, I don't think they're photos. Uh, they, they often don't have many people in them, do they? They're normally quite sparse and just a lot of fluffy clouds as well. And I don't know about you guys, but when you saw those images up there, if you struggled with them a bit, I know I struggled with them. Um, So if you imagine if we struggle with some of those images, then imagine how people outside of the church struggle with them as well. What about this image here about heaven as more of a courtroom? God's kingdom is not like this. And the parable that we just shared together is not like that. It is more like this. It's a banquet, a feast. The gathering of the body of Christ is supposed to be a wedding feast. And do you know how many times in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that eternal life is described as a banquet or a feast or a party or a wedding or the marriage feast of the Lamb? 15 times. There are 15 different direct allusions to eternal life being this great big party. And do you know how many parables there are about eternal life being a courtroom or a judgment scene? One, Matthew 25. And even then, that's actually a really good, helpful image to have that we'll be considering in a short while. And I'm not trying to be cruel, but let's actually just be honest and admit that many of us probably aren't that excited about church as a whole. Shock, horror. For many of us, the body of Christ is not a party. Instead, we often believe that heaven is perhaps more like a giant courtroom scene. But it's not, it's a feast, it's a party, it's a place of plenty, a place of joy. What would it look like if we really truly considered the kingdom of God in this way? If we really embraced it? That the way we gathered as Jesus followers sought to live out images more like this 
as the kingdom of heaven, of community being together, of celebrating life in all its fullness. Or the way that we conveyed that message of eternal life, of life in all its fullness to those around us, to those outside the church, about it being something to be celebrated, not a chore, not something that we just have to do, not a religious act, but actually something that we choose to do because it brings us life, because it brings us joy, because we have great times in community together, worshipping God. What if we lived our lives more in that way and reflected that to those outside the church? I wonder how that could look a bit different. So that one parable that is about eternal life being more like a judgment scene, uh, Matthew 25, uh, it's all about the sheep and the goats, uh, where uh, Jesus talks about the sheep being on his right and the goats being on his left uh, at the the end of days. And he says, those on his right, um, you inherit the kingdom. For I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And then he says in this parable that the righteous then ask when they did this. They they don't know when they did this, but Jesus replies, whatever you did for the least of these, you did this for me. And that's actually a really valuable image for us to have. Uh, That's not just a scary courtroom scene, um, but actually it's a really important one. We need Matthew 25 because it makes it clear, very clear, that actually one of the really significant issues is about how we care for the poor and the marginalised. But some of us perhaps in the church, church with the big C, not necessarily this church, um, but we perhaps don't like this parable very much because it implies that people who don't even realise that they're doing the work of God can still get into God's kingdom. And that, that's not fair, is it? If they don't even realise it, if they haven't been attending church every single Sunday, how can they get in? And we forget this good news of Jesus, actually, where... The, the person in this story, in the parable, sends a message out to the highways and the byways, inviting everybody who's willing to come to the banquet, that everyone is invited, and it's that simple. As I said, there's a parallel story in Matthew 22 where Jesus shares a very similar parable where he says the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. And it follows a similar pattern to the one that Hannah read to us, that the king invites people and then they don't come along for various different reasons. Um, And then we have this where the king says to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all who they found, the good and the bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. Both the good and the bad, and perhaps the ugly too. Jesus goes out of his way to mention the good and the bad alike and and we don't like this as christians often we only want the good people to be there at the banquet assuming of course that we're the good people i don't know if you see the irony of that that actually pretty much every religion or in fact every religion thinks that they are the ones that god likes And we end up gathering at the party with this smug certitude. But when we do, it resembles something that very often isn't much like a party. Instead, we often believe that heaven is a giant courtroom scene. That the good people win, the bad people lose, and almost everyone is bad, except for our group. 
And that just simply doesn't work. It gives no joy. It gives no hope to the world. It tells people that they're on the right side when sometimes there are unloving people who don't actually care about the poor or the marginalised at all. And the statistics prove that actually Christians are sadly no better than anyone else. In fact, very often, I'm sorry to say it, Christians can be worse, believe it or not. Do we want to be a part of the wedding feast to which all are invited? The only people who don't get in on the party are those who don't want to come. So I guess we have to ask ourselves the question, do we want to come? So what does this mean for us? Well, we need to rethink about who's in and who's out. And Jamie shared this a couple of times over the past few weeks about the distinction between the bounded set and the centred set. So what you see in this is what I've just been describing, where we think that we're maybe the ones on the inside and everyone else is on the outside. That we're the ones who are heading towards God's kingdom. Everyone else is on the outside. We're in, they're out. But actually, this is what it's more about. The centred set where you see all of those different people on the screen. I don't know if you remember if you came along to the family service where we had the big circle and people who were in and out of the circle, but then we had the cross and people oriented towards the cross or away from the cross, people focusing towards Jesus or away from Jesus. So actually in the centred set, whilst the original guests at this wedding banquet, at this feast, might have been closer to the master, to the king, they were actually moving away in this image. And perhaps others on the street who were invited to come, who might have been much further away from the cross, were actually oriented towards Christ. So they could still be further away, but they could be heading in the right direction. So in fact, it's not even just about rethinking about who's in and who's out. But actually parables such as these and Matthew 25 tell us that it's not even our call to make because as we know, we can get that very wrong when we decide who's in and who's out. But Jesus tells us that all are welcome, absolutely everyone. And we talk about this at church at times, but do we actually live it? Over the past year and a half, two years, we've had the haven um, and we've had more folk coming along to the church, uh, which is awesome. But as we grow as a church, as we have different people come and go in different ways, we can sometimes feel uncomfortable with new people who come in because they're new, they're different. Um, They're not part of our in-group. And we can sometimes feel a bit uncomfortable. And there's times when We have validity in feeling a bit uncomfortable with some people because sometimes, you know, there can be some tensions there, there can be some difficulties. So what I'm not saying here is that actually if you genuinely did feel uncomfortable with someone for some very valid reasons, I'm not saying to just ignore that. But actually those valid reasons are often quite rare in reality. A lot of the time it's because people don't look like us or think like us or act like us but guess what that's what God's kingdom is supposed to look like God's kingdom is full of the good and full of the bad and full of the ugly too and actually that's not just good people and bad people separately but actually that's in all of us all of us have good and bad and ugly within each and every one of us And yet we are still welcome and we are still invited into God's kingdom. So let's not be asking the question of who's in and who's out. But let's ask our own, let's ask ourselves individually the question of how am I oriented? How am I oriented today? Am I oriented today towards Christ? Asking that question every day. How 
Am I, what direction am I heading in today? How can I head towards Christ today? So as we draw this message to a close, and as I just invite the band to come back up, just a few reminders there. That actually, it's a banquet, not a courtroom. God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, is a party. It's not a courtroom. It's not a place of deep judgment where we decide who's in and who's out. But actually, it is a party. So let's begin to act like that. Let's seek to share about that more with those around us that actually, if this church is called to be a foretaste of God's kingdom to come, then let's make that a foretaste of the party to come. And also, God's got the guest list, not us. God's laid out the banquet. God has got the guest list. And guess what? Everyone is welcome on that guest list. Everyone's name is on that guest list. It's just about people choosing to come into God's kingdom. And finally, all are welcome. We are just called to love. Leave God to make the judgment. We've just got to love and welcome people to the party and to let the Holy Spirit do the rest. I'm just going to pray. Lord, we thank you that you welcome every single person in this room to your great big party. But not only everyone in this room, but everyone in this town, everyone in this county, everyone in this nation, everyone in this world is welcome to your kingdom. Lord, may we remember this. May we remember that your kingdom is something to celebrate, something to be excited for, something to experience now and in the eternity to come. And Lord, may we help people experience this flavour of your kingdom. May we feel encouraged to be able to share with those around us, not out of fear or judgment, but actually out of welcome. Lord, as we welcome different people into this church community, as we continually seek how we be a a church community focused on you. Lord, may we welcome everyone into this place. May people feel welcome no matter who they are, no matter where they come from. May they feel your love, most importantly, directly through you, but also through the community around them. Lord, we thank you for your unending love for each and every one of us. Amen. Before we continue with our song worship together, I've just uh, got something else to share too. Um, So you'll all be aware, or many of you will be aware of the the difficult journey uh, that Hannah and I have had uh, over the past year. It's led to a lot of soul searching, um, a lot of reflections, a lot of prayers in seeking, uh, in seeking God and in seeking our journey with God as well. And we've been reflecting on, on whether we might actually be called or drawn towards a new chapter as well. And uh, within, within this, uh, I've been considering taking the plunge uh, into becoming a lead minister at another church. Um, and after lots of consideration and discussions uh, and a couple of sneaky preaching visits, um, I've been called to become minister of uh, Mark Yate Baptist Church, uh, which is a village just in between St. Albans and Lutford. Uh, Lutford? Uh, that was a mixture of Luton and Watford, which is a terrible thing for people like Alistair, who supports... Uh, is it Luton, Alistair? I can't remember. Um, but this... Um, yeah, so it's uh, a couple of hours away from here. Uh, It's been a really, really big decision for us to make, Um, but it does feel like a great opportunity for us. Um, They seem like a diverse group of people, uh, community focused, a chance to kind of further express uh, the different areas that I'm passionate about that I've been able to express here as well about well-being, about community. 
Um, so I have accepted the call. Um, and our final day here, uh, very sadly, uh, will be Sunday the 8th of January. Um, so also Hannah starts a new remote job tomorrow, um, which will really help with that transition to a new place. Uh, we've got other exciting plans, taking a month out in between to go to New Zealand. Um, we are really excited, um, but we are also, of course, very daunted, and most importantly, really, really sad as well. We will miss the shore terribly. Um, it's been an amazing four and a half years for, for the two of us. Um, and Han and I have just felt incredibly supported by, by all of you, um, particularly over the past year as well. Um, we've really felt that, so we are so appreciative of you all. Um, and appreciative of being the op having the opportunity to be Associate Minister here as well. Um, and to have been able to work with the youth, to be able to work in different life groups, uh, to be able to head up the Haven, um, to have worked closely on a staff team with Julie, Carla, Amanda, even Jamie at times has been all right. <laughs> um, and I would count all of them and all of you guys as such good friends. And I, I know Hannah would as well. Um, it's been such a formative time for us being able to involve, be involved in different things and for Hannah to be involved in different things in the church too. Um, so we'll be focusing very much on the next couple of months, uh, trying to be as present here as possible, really excited for uh, the Christmas run-up. Um, and I know that there will be a gap left by us leaving, but we're also just excited to see what grows within that gap as well. Um, so we are just so appreciative of all of your support, your ongoing support, I'm sure, and all of your prayers as well. Um, so yeah, just a big thank you to all and bless you all.
changes of season there is one thing that we can be certain of that God is faithful you can trust him and we are so grateful for the wonderful season that we've shared with Nick and Hannah it's not quite over yet you don't get away that easily but it's a time of change and as one door closes doesn't, doesn't quite close but one season becomes a new season doesn't it something else happens and we are so joyful and grateful for what God is doing in your lives and we know that you're grateful as we are for what God is doing and will continue to do in the community here so let's have a cup of coffee if you want to come and pray down here there'll be some folks uh, waiting down here to pray